Many people have made the switch and I am guilty of doing the same. For me, it was a mistake that cost me both time and money. Don't get me wrong, DaVinci Resolve is a fantastic tool but it may not be the right choice for everyone especially if you are already familiar with Premiere Pro. Here are 5 reasons why you should think twice before switching to DaVinci from Premiere Pro so that you don't make the same mistake I did. When you are thinking about making the switch from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, one big thing to keep in mind is the learning curve. If you have been using Premiere Pro for a while, you have probably invested quite a bit of time and effort into mastering it, from the user interface to those handy keyboard shortcuts and the whole workflow. But moving over to DaVinci Resolve is like starting all over again in many ways. It's got a different look and uses its own terminology which can be a bit confusing at first if you are used to Premiere Pro. You'll need to get the hang of new keyboard shortcuts, wrap your head around the unique layout of the software and adjust to a different way of tackling your editing task. And trust me, this learning curve can be a real headache especially if you've got tight deadlines approaching. And here's another thing. DaVinci Resolve is kind of famous for its color grading capabilities. But not everyone needs those extensive color grading features. If color grading isn't a big part of your work, you might find yourself wondering why you are dealing with all these extra features which can make your learning journey even more complex. So it's important to consider whether all of this is really necessary for your specific needs before making the switch. Moving from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve can bring up some compatibility issues, especially if you have been using Adobe's own file formats and plugins. DaVinci Resolve might have a hard time bringing in your Adobe Premiere Pro project files and you might run into problems with specific effects transitions or third-party plugins. Even if you manage to transfer your projects to DaVinci Resolve, you might notice that they don't look or work the same way due to differences in how they handle rendering and processing. This can lead to time-consuming adjustment and even a potential loss of quality in your final output. And here's another thing to consider, collaboration. If you are working with a team or clients who are used to Adobe products, they might not be familiar with DaVinci Resolve and that can lead to compatibility issues and extra communication challenges. Reason number three is limited integration. Adobe Premiere Pro is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud suite and the cool thing is that it seamlessly works with other Adobe apps like After Effects, Photoshop and Audition. This means you can use the dynamic link feature to easily switch between different creative tasks like editing, compositing and sound design without any hiccups. Now, when it comes to DaVinci Resolve, it's a bit of different story. It doesn't offer that same level of integration with other software tools. Sure, it has some basic fusion and audio editing features, but it just can't match the deep integration you get with the Adobe's whole ecosystem. So if your work involves a lot of visual effects, graphic design or audio editing, you might find it a bit tougher to keep everything streamlined in DaVinci Resolve. Fourth reason is limited third-party support. Adobe Premiere Pro has been a big deal in the video editing world for quite some time. It's become so popular that there's a huge library of third-party plugins, extensions and resources created specifically to make it even more awesome. These plugins can really open up your creative possibilities and make you work more efficient. Now, when it comes to DaVinci Resolve, it is gaining popularity, but it's not quite on the same level in terms of third-party support. It does support some plugins and extensions, but it doesn't have that extensive library you'd find with Premiere Pro. So you might run into a situation where you can't access all the tools and features you are used to, and you might even find yourself missing some essential functionality that only third-party solutions can provide. Now, the biggest reason why some video editors think about switching to DaVinci Resolve is because of its free version. It's true, DaVinci Resolve does offer a free version that comes with some really impressive features. But the thing is, you need to consider the total cost of ownership as well. See, that free version of DaVinci Resolve has its limitations. You are looking at a restricted range of supported video formats, not to mention limited plugins, effects, and you can't access the AI neural engine for automated editing. To unlock the full set of features and capabilities, you have got to upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio, which does come with a pretty hefty price tag. Now, if we look at Adobe Premiere Pro, they have got a different deal going on with a subscription-based pricing model. This can be more cost-effective for a lot of people, especially if you are using the software for professional work. With Adobe's subscription plans, you get access to regular updates and all the new features they roll out. So when it comes to cost, it's essential to weigh your options carefully. 
before you even think about making the switch take some time to really think about what you need and how you work ask yourself if davinci resolve is a good fit for your requirements and if the advantages it offers are worth the challenges that might come with the transition keep in mind that the best video editing software for you comes down to your personal preferences and what your projects demand it's not a one size fits all situation so choose what works best for you and your unique style of editing thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one